Hunan breaks records with severe flooding, homes submerged, tall trees just peeking above water. Military deployment? Large number of tanks seen in Nanjing and Shijiazhuang. Xi Jinping's unusual move. The epidemic is resurging in China. Falun Gong founder, it is targeting the Chinese Communist Party. Is the regime's foundation unstable? CCP conducts nationwide training for grassroots cadres to pledge allegiance to Xi Jinping. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Hunan breaks records with severe flooding, homes submerged, tall trees just peeking above water. On the night of August 26 to the morning of the 27th, a sudden torrential downpour struck Zhangjiaji County, Hunan Province, resulting in severe flooding. Floodwaters surged over the bridge supports, submerging the urban area under waist-deep water and causing damage to crops along the riverbanks. Videos depict the streets with turbulent waves. Local residents likened it to a dam releasing a torrent of floodwaters, with torrents rushing out. Numerous houses are submerged, and only the treetops of tall trees are visible. Local resident, the water is still rising. It's enormous, I've never seen such massive water before. On the same day, heavy rain hit multiple areas in Taizhou, Zhujiang, leading to urban flooding and cars being submerged. Meanwhile, in Bajo, Hebei, a place that recently suffered the calamity of flooding at the end of July, the floodwaters have not yet receded, and certain areas remain underwater. A local resident reports, currently, there's still about 30 to 40 centimeters of water, and in the lower-lying areas, it's over a meter and a half deep. Unfortunately, it's raining again. Tornado strikes Yanqing, Jiangsu, multiple homes collapse, numerous injuries. In the early hours of August 28, Buffing Town and Tingna District, Yanqing City, Jiangsu Province, experienced an unusual tornado. This event led to the collapse of many residential homes. Large trees were uprooted and snapped in half. Official reports suggest that this calamity resulted in injuries to two individuals, with over 105 households enduring damage to their homes, including 35 households facing severe damage. The actual count of casualties and property losses remains uncertain. Mass fish deaths in Hebei province On August 27, a large number of dead fish were discovered on the river's surface near Donghu Park in Guangping County, Handan City, Hebei province. The river was covered in these motionless, white fish, and the reason behind this remains unknown. Local authorities have stated that these deceased fish are not safe for consumption, and the precise cause of this mass fish mortality is unclear. Mainland China has recently witnessed a surge in catastrophic weather events, raising concerns internationally. Distinguished political commentator and guest lecturer at New York Fakian University, Jiang Feng, remarked, I've heard that typhoons have eyes, but I've never heard that they actually have eyes. Jiang analysis suggests that this year's typhoon number 9, after forming in the eastern part of the Philippines, bypassed the southern tip of Taiwan and then made a meandering turn, heading straight for Guangdong and Zhujiang, which are the frontline areas in the Chinese Communist Party's plan to unify Taiwan through force. Meanwhile, Typhoon No. 11 brushed past the northern part of Taiwan and went directly for Jiangsu, Zhujiang, and Shanghai, which are the CCP's financial powerhouses. This has put the top echelons of the CCP in a precarious position, and the situation on the ground is chaotic and unsettled, with overturned boats everywhere. Military deployment? Large number of tanks seen in Nanjing and Shijiazhuang, Xi Jinping's unusual move. While Xi Jinping was on his visit to South Africa, various unusual signals, both at home and abroad, have sparked speculation among observers about instability within the CCP. On August 27, a video began circulating online, depicting a significant number of tanks being transported via railway in China. Reports suggest that this footage of tanks on a train was captured in Shijiazhuang, the capital of Hebei province. Some speculate that because Shijiazhuang is in close proximity to Beijing, these tanks may be linked to political turbulence within the CCP. 
One factor fueling this speculation is the recent resurgence of signs indicating intense infighting among Chinese leadership, particularly within the confines of Zhongnanhai. Following Xi Jinping's participation in the BRICS summit in South Africa, instead of returning directly to Beijing, he made an uncommon detour, flying straight to Urumqi in Xinjiang. There, on the 26th, he received briefings from both the military and political sectors. Such a travel arrangement is exceedingly rare. What makes it even more notable is the fact that Gina Raimondo, the U.S. Commerce Secretary, had a scheduled visit to Beijing on the 27th. This is especially significant given China's current economic precariousness. In addition to sidelining Raimondo, Xi Jinping's meeting in Urumqi was exceptional because it brought together high-ranking CCP military and political officials, including Kai Chi, Director of the Central Committee's General Office, Wang Yi, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Shi Taifong, Minister of the United Front Work Department, Li Ganjie, Minister of the Organization Department, He Weidong, Vice Chairman of the Central Military Commission, Chen Wenqing, Secretary of the Political and Legal Affairs Commission, and Wang Xiaohong, Minister of Public Security. Commentator Tang Jingyuan holds the belief that there are currently no critical issues in Xinjiang. Instead, the imminent collapse of China's economy and the ongoing diplomatic tensions between China and Japan are the major concerns. Given this situation, Xi Jinping's unconventional decision not to return to Beijing immediately but to make a peculiar trip to Xinjiang is connected to his abrupt absence from the South African Business Forum. According to Mr. Tang, Xi Jinping's sudden absence could either signify a sudden and severe health problem or a significant political crisis. He adds, considering Xi Jinping's regular participation in the BRICS summit following his recent appearances, where he appeared fatigued but had no significant health issues, it's more likely that he has encountered a sudden political crisis. During Xi Jinping's stay in South Africa, Lu Mengxiong, a former member of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, published an op-ed in the Singaporean Liena Zaobao titled The Problem Lies in the Economy, and the Root is in Politics. In this piece, Liu criticized a series of policies implemented by Xi Jinping for causing harm to the Chinese economy and disrupting Sino-U.S. relations. This op-ed, regarded as a denunciation of Xi, is also seen as a signal of intensified infighting within the Zhongnanhai leadership. Host Tang Hao of Crossroads suggests that despite holding significant power, Xi Jinping genuinely worries about his personal safety. Consequently, he tends to withdraw from the public eye at the slightest sign of trouble to avoid potential threats and assassination attempts. Following this sequence of unusual events, the appearance of numerous tanks in Shijiazhuang has sparked concerns about the political situation in Beijing. However, there is also speculation that the CCP may be ramping up its preparations for war. Meanwhile, Yao Cheng, a former staff colonel and naval commander, speculates that the tank convoy may be headed north, potentially toward Russia. As Russia's situation in Ukraine continues to deteriorate, even if the Russia-Ukraine conflict were to conclude through negotiations, it wouldn't be favorable for Beijing. Western powers could then redirect their efforts toward countering the CCP. Coupled with mounting domestic political and economic instability in China, the likelihood of the CCP initiating a foreign war is increasing, and the time available for such actions is diminishing. Furthermore, recent efforts by Chinese authorities to incite anti-Japanese sentiments domestically, particularly in light of Japan's release of nuclear wastewater, have led some to believe that Xi Jinping is preparing public opinion for a potential conflict. If the CCP were to provoke a foreign conflict in the future, it's believed they might form an alliance with Russia and North Korea, creating an axis of hostile forces. The epidemic is resurging in China, Falun Gong founder, it is targeting the Chinese Communist Party. Amidst the resurgence of new coronavirus in mainland China, there has been a significant increase in the number of deaths among prominent experts, senior government officials, corporate executives, and young police officers over the past two months. Many of these individuals were honored as outstanding party members by the CCP. However, the Chinese government has consistently hidden the actual nature of the pandemic and the reasons behind these deaths. A special report published by the Epoch Times on August 28 highlights that Master Li Hongji, the founder of Falun Gong, 
has recently emphasized that the primary target of the COVID-19 pandemic is the Chinese Communist Party, along with those who blindly follow, support, and serve the CCP. This has resulted in the deaths of many individuals, including young people. From July to August, there has been a notable increase in the deaths of judicial officials and young police officers across mainland China, and all of them were members of the CCP. For example, the Weibo Verified Account Golden Shield Monument, associated with CCP Public Security, reported that Wang Ruizong, a first-level police officer at the Luhong Police Station in Dongan County, Yongzhou City, Hunan Province, passed away on August 1 at the age of just 23. Similarly, Li Jianlan, the director of the Traffic Police Brigade Command Center at Suqian City Public Security Bureau in Jiangsu Province, succumbed on August 7 at the age of only 34, and so on. Moreover, at least 10 professors from well-known mainland Chinese universities such as Peking University, Tsinghua University, and Beijing Foreign Studies University have died. Among them, seven were members of the CCP, three were medical experts, and two were legal experts. Notable figures include Zhang Ziliang, the founder of the United Nations Translation and Training Department at Beijing Foreign Studies University, and Li Jiguang, the former director of the first affiliated hospital of China Medical University. In addition, there have been recent deaths among senior administrative officials and corporate executives. On August 12, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China announced the passing of Zhao Jiofang, the Secretary of the Commercial Aircraft Commission for Discipline Inspection, in Beijing on August 6 at the age of 59. So, how severe is the new wave of the pandemic in China? On August 19, the Chinese National Health Commission revealed that the COVID-19 new variant EG.5 has become the dominant strain in most Chinese provinces, surging from 0.6% in April to 71.6% in August. This trend is expected to continue in the near future. EG.5 is a subvariant of Omicron XBB.1.9.2. The World Health Organization classifies EG.5 as a variant of interest and highlights that it should be closely monitored due to the potential for increased transmissibility or more severe illness compared to other variants. On August 22, numerous doctors in China reported a rise in patients with the third bout infection condition in hospitals. In detail, Dr. Liu, an associate chief physician in the cardiovascular department of Yangming Hospital affiliated with Ningbo University, noted that recently, they have encountered new coronavirus patients with third bout infection results in both the cardiology ward and outpatient clinics. There has also been an increase in the new coronavirus cases in emergency and fever clinics compared to the past. Over the past three years, the CCP has not only concealed the truth but also enforced extreme lockdown measures, resulting in numerous humanitarian disasters. So, what is the root cause of this ongoing pandemic, and what is the way out? In fact, Master Li Hongji has been providing profound insights for many years. As we've reported previously, at the outset of the pandemic, in March 2020, Master Li stated in an article titled Stay Rational That, Truth Be Told, pandemics only come when people's morals and values have turned bad and they have come to have a massive amount of karma. Master Li clearly outlined the path to salvation, but a pandemic like the current Chinese communist virus, or Wuhan virus, comes with a purpose behind it, and it has targets. It is here to weed out members of the party and those who have sided with it. Master Li further emphasized, then what should people do? People should distance themselves from the CCP and stop siding with the party. Behind it is the Red Devil, while outwardly it looks and acts like a thug who stops at no evil. So now that the divine is starting to eradicate it, all who still stand by it shall perish. Those who doubt this can wait and see. The Epic Times stated in its special report that the development of the pandemic confirms Master Li's words. In wave after wave of large-scale outbreaks in China, many people have died. However, the true data has been consistently concealed by the CCP. Based on publicly available data from Chinese hospitals and universities, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, USA, reported on August 24 that, since China abandoned its zero-COVID policy in December 2022, by January of this year, 1.87 million people had died in China, with COVID-19 being the major contributing factor. 
the official figures released by the Chinese authorities have long been suspected of significant underreporting and manipulation. Amidst the worsening epidemic situation in China, the CCP made a significant announcement on August 28. They stated that, effective from August 30, travelers heading to China will no longer be required to undergo pre entry COVID 19 nucleic acid or antigen testing. This year, while the rest of the world has been making progress toward normalcy, China has been an outlier by consistently reporting new outbreaks. Their decision to abolish nucleic acid testing for incoming travelers back in April has now escalated to a full reopening of their borders. This move has generated widespread discussions because the situation regarding the new coronavirus in China is deteriorating, with severe symptoms observed among the current wave of patients. Encouraging foreign travelers to enter and exit China undoubtedly raises the global risk of virus transmission. Is the regime's foundation unstable? CCP conducts nationwide training for grassroots cadres to pledge allegiance to Xi Jinping. Amidst China's economic stagnation, three major departments of the Communist Party, namely the Central Organization Department, the Central Department of Social Work, and the Central Party School, National School of Administration, are conducting training for leaders of grassroots community neighborhood committees nationwide, which mainly focus on pledging loyalty to Xi Jinping. In detail, according to China's Xinhua News Agency, from August 20 to 24, these three departments jointly conducted a video training session for community party organization secretaries and neighborhood committee directors. This training focused on studying Xi Jinping thought and emphasized support for the two confirmations and unwavering defense of the two safeguards. These terms are political catchphrases signifying loyalty to Xi Jinping. In April of the same year, the Central Organization Department and Central Party School had already provided training for village party organization secretaries and village committee directors nationwide. Dr. Lin Song, a political science PhD from the University of New South Wales, explained to the Epoch Times on August 28 that these high-level training courses for grassroots cadres represent an unprecedented effort to reinforce ideological control at the grassroots level. This shift comes because, since China's economic reforms in the 1980s, social control across society hasn't been as rigorously enforced as it was during the 1960s Cultural Revolution. The CCP's grip on grassroots levels has gradually weakened. In recent years, the COVID-19 lockdowns and anti-lockdown protests have shown that civil society is becoming uncontrollable. Now, with video training for community party organizations and neighborhood committees, they aim to regain control at the grassroots level. Historian Li Yuanhua, who resides in Australia, stated on August 28 to the Epoch Times that the authorities are conducting such extensive grassroots training because the regime's foundation is highly unstable, particularly with possible discussions about Xi Jinping himself. This has made Xi Jinping concerned. Those around Xi Jinping try to please him and cater to his preferences because the leader surely likes being supported. So, they engage in these activities on a large scale. He mentioned that training at various levels has always existed in different regions. The CCP has party schools at various levels, with one level training the next. Now, by conducting training across so many levels, it indicates that the central leadership is not satisfied with the effectiveness of grassroots training. Independent commentator Wu Tei from China used the recent unannounced flood discharge during the North China floods as an example. This incident, along with the post-disaster compensation, has caused grievances among ordinary people. Village cadres or community cadres are mostly locals and are easily inclined to passively execute or even resist orders from the central authorities, something she cannot tolerate. However, Wu stated, after all, she himself lacks charismatic leadership and does not have his own meaningful ideology, so basically, no one really admires him. This kind of training will only increase the burden on the grassroots, and many people will be even more averse to Xi because of it. In recent years, various parts of mainland China have seen movements like the White Paper Movement against lockdowns and protests like the White Harem Movement against unfair healthcare reforms. With economic downturns and a nationwide youth unemployment crisis, CCP officials have already warned that these factors could lead to political unrest. 
Liyuanhua states, civil resistance continues to occur, and the Central Department of Social Work is trying to teach grassroots cadres how to extinguish the flames of resistance to the CCP in a timely manner. But when a real crisis comes, its stability maintenance efforts will be in vain. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.